going to call the emergency meeting to order. Um, it is 10.03 or so. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming on a Saturday morning at the last minute. Um, we're here to, first of all, see if there's any public comment for items not on the agenda or addition or changes to the agenda. Okay, um, we have with us in attendance in person our Scott Bassett and Barbara Butler. I don't know, probably you guys can't see them any more than you can see us. All right, so the governor ordered on... Closer because my hearing aids yeah, are out fine. Of air and I can't hear. Right. <laughs> on, um, on Monday, June 14th, the governor lifted the state of emergency for the COVID 19 crisis, um, and that means that effective immediately, public bodies of so municipalities need to go back to in person meetings there is the opportunity still as there was before the pandemic to have in public in-person meetings plus have it set up so that people could attend remotely so i think that given what we've all learned over the course of this at least past year um, that some people would rather attend remotely it's more convenient for them you know for me i could go from one Zoom meeting to another and do three back-to-back -back Zooms all at once, add one after the other. Um, so that was exciting. But now we are going to have to come back to meeting and we want to open up the town hall to reuse by the public for public meetings. Um, the upstairs portion is not yet ready to be open for private events. That still has to be um, worked out with the friends of town hall. And I know that they're working on it, and we'll have a proposal for the select board at some time in the very near future. So I think today the meeting can be very short. Um, we just have to put on the record that we're reopening the town hall for use by public bodies. Um, the question, one of the things that I notice is there's a large pile of gravel out there that we need to get the road crew to move. Um, so that's something we need to do. And we need to talk about um, cleaning. If there's going to be a lot of people using the hall, we need to talk about who we're going to get to do cleaning, what that schedule is going to look like. Um, you know, is it every other week? Is it? I don't know. If the, I know the town office staff was looking at possibly contacting Amy Rowell, who used to clean at the town office. It sounded like between your and Judy's exchanges, that's what's going to happen. Okay, so that hasn't happened yet, but that's something no, that you're working on. happened over the weekend. Okay. So. so you and Judy are working on that. Well, good morning in person. Hey. I know, right? Yep. I haven't changed that much, but I guess I've changed a, almost a year and a half's worth. <laughs> yep, we all have. Um, so we were just getting started, Chairman, sure, this much. Yeah. Other than that, we're reopening the hall. Um, we need to come up with um, Barbara and Judy are checking on somebody to do some cleaning. There's the pile of gravel that needs to be moved. Cliff is going to talk about this owl system. You want to? Talk about that. Yeah, um, if we're going to go to a hybrid model um, where the select board is meeting in person as they normally would, um, but we want to be able to have a Zoom uh, option simultaneously, mm -hmm. then I would recommend the select board invest in a uh, video conferencing system. It's called Owl Pro. It costs about $1,000. It's a device that, oddly enough, looks like an owl. And, um, Pro? Owl Owl Pro. Pro, yeah, right. Oh, Pro. And uh, they would sit in the middle of the table. It has built-in microphone and uh, speakers, so the audio quality on it is really good. The camera is at the top of the device, and it actually recognizes when someone's speaking and pivots around 360 degrees. So that'll uh -huh. keep people from talking all at once. Well, it gets, yeah, it gets a little confused. Yeah, it gets a little confused if people are talking over <laughs> each other, but well, it, it well, does pretty good. Uh, I've okay, used them stick. before. Um, they work remarkably well. Uh, you do need to have um, a smart device 
uh, when you first initialize and set the thing up. After that, um, you can plug it in, have it uh, broadcasting to the monitor, mm -hmm. and um, then it's it's virtually like everybody's in the same room. How, Paul, John? That door doesn't. No, it's locked. Yeah. It's locked. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah, because I tried to use it and it wouldn't work. Um, so where does one get this from? We just order it directly from the company that manufactures it. It takes about two weeks to get. So, oh, so you can broadcast simultaneously. With from the mating, it's just basically. Oh, well, I'm glad Good you morning, didn't do John. that. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't do that in front of the camera. I just, oh, I'm going to kiss. It's over here. Shut up, this bad. What? Nothing done. Okay. <laughs> Good morning. We're just glad you didn't just robe in front of the camera, that's all. My house is 60 degrees inside and 77 outside. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, so my, so how does this is it, weird. so, so Cliff, I understand the, you know, the little guy sits, the owl sits in the middle and pivots around when we're speaking. Um, and it's broadcasting simultaneously to, you know, Stephanie and Katie. Yeah, um, as well as to the screen. Right. Um, and then how are Stephanie and is, is it literally Zoom so they're participating through a Zoom format and we can see? Right, so just imagine if we had the device hooked up right now and it was sitting in the table like this. Yeah. Then you started speaking, the camera at the top would pivot around towards you and they would just see you on the screen. Okay. And then if Denise started talking, it would pivot around and they just see Denise. How quickly does it pivot? Just like pretty quickly. Oh. And um, if, if you're that. using it in conjunction with your uh, smart device, you can manually do it as well. So if it's not tracking quickly enough, you can just scroll across your smart device and tell the camera to pivot around. Uh -huh. but, it's, <laughs> but it's using Zoom. It doesn't use any conferencing system. Okay, so, that, so Stephanie and Katie are having a Zoom experience and we're able to see them? Yes. Um, they can see us. And they can... See us, mm -hmm. so it's so it's like it, it's a step, it's two or three steps better than, you know, John's laptop has got Zoom on it, and we're kind of passing that. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Or this option that we're doing here, which is, you know, like if John wants to talk, then I got to pivot it manually around to him. Gotcha. Or if you want to see my ugly mug. It seems like when they're pivoting, if, if it was oriented off one end, then it would only be sweeping a few degrees. Yeah. As long as the mic and then right. Just the like same. you would do regular Zoom meetings. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just raise your hand or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it actually has, I think, like three cameras on top, so it doesn't rely upon just the one camera. Oh, uh, okay. That's yeah. pretty cool. Okay, how many monies? A thousand. A thousand. A thousand here, a thousand. Said that. Yeah. So Is, that sounds like something we need to do right so off. I mean, I can, I can probably. That sounds. That's a huge it benefit. Like. It is. Is that a is, it, is that is that mic remote remote on it? So if we if we did put it off, say the end of a table, so it was just it's all built into the device. Oh, so it, would it pick up if it was say you know? Yeah, it's really accurate. So then it would only be sweeping a couple degrees. Yeah. Be, you know I mean? Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's amazing yeah. how people have come up with all these things over the last. Maybe it always. Maybe it's not new new, but who knew? We were gonna they stuff like they this. launched. They they've had it for a while. Then they launched the um, Owl Pro. Yeah. Just about the time that the pandemic broke. Ah. Like so Zoom, they <laughs> dialed in perfectly. Wow. And then we get stock in this. Should that be uh, should yeah. the town buy stock in this? Right there yeah. you go. <laughs> take a, a thousand long, for it and another thousand in stock so we can pay for all of our buildings. For a long time, you couldn't even um, get them. You couldn't get them? Yeah, because they were backordered. Oh, yeah, they're that popular. So Cliff, my next question is, um, if, if we move forward and get one of these, will you be our tech point person to pass your June 30 until somebody else learns to run the thing competently? I can uh, get you going, yeah, that's not a problem. Yeah. 
Okay, because it sounds like we're going to have to teach. It, it isn't. It's, yeah, it's, it's really intuitive. It sounds like we're going to have to teach each board commission and committee somebody on each one of those. Or we two can. People we to can even work up some, some uh, direction instructions and in how to use it. We need a. I, actually, I was, I've been thinking about we're going to we're going to need a new tech person. We're not going to have somebody of of Cliff's level but i'm i'll cliff i want volunteering to be the person you train okay. um to and then you know when i hit road bumps i'll just call you as a citizen and say cliff well maybe he could be appointed to our new tech position that we're going to create during this meeting I, yeah i yeah. would suggest <laughs> that uh, <laughs> we well, can that pay would, our standard 20 dollar an hour wage well that no that would that would work too but i'm assuming that cliff doesn't want to keep being the board's tech person, but if you do, I'm all for that. Oh, well, I, I, what I was going to suggest is that in that shopping list that uh, you're building for your administrative support person, that that be one of the qualifications. Absolutely, uh, we don't have that person yet. Right. So what I mean, I mean, really, today's meeting is about reopening the town hall. Today's meeting is really about opening the town hall, and we go about doing that. So how do we have a meeting if the building isn't open? until we officially open it. I guess we go out in the parking lot. So we're not really here. Yeah, we're not. It's a figment of your imagination. This is just no. one of those back zoom backdrops that looks like we're here. Yeah, right but um, <laughs> until we get somebody on board, are you willing to be that person at like 20 bucks an hour until we get things figured out? Cliff. Yes. That's toward you. Okay. <clears throat> So there's a picture of it, links you can see it actually looks like an owl. Oh, come on. Has eight microphones built into it, an 18 foot audio pickup radius. <coughs> okay, so like right now, right now when you're doing this, can the Zoom people see this? They will in a minute. Hang on, bear with me. Multitasking. Well, that's coming. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Cool. I wonder, is on, did, does it have a remote audio port on it, or is it just all, it, like you said? I think it might have a, a jack on it, so you could port the audio out to, if we had a full sound system in here, for example. Mm -hmm. But the audio on it is incredible. I, like I said, I've used it, and uh, you, I uh, did some volunteer work for a group, and they were having a... Um, statewide conference with people calling in from all over the country and it was flawless it was hmm. just flawless <clears throat> and and it and so the so we're still using as let's just say a zoom um, format and we bought the license so i guess why wouldn't we um but then so when stephanie asked her question a few minutes ago i heard like this little you know, fuzz coming out of your computer, Cliff, you could hear her better. But once we have that, is the audio coming? The audio will be coming from the device. It will be coming through the device right. and going into the device. So it would be better quality. So the lower part of the owl there, below its eyes, mm -hmm. um, you are speakers. And once again, they go all the way around. Yep, okay. So I have a question for Orca. Will you still, are you gonna start coming back in person to meetings? You are, okay. And, and not just Callus, right? I mean, you guys now with Zoom, you've been covering other towns as well, East Montpelier. I will be covering uh, East Berlin on Monday. Okay, so, and yeah. East Montpelier. So probably, so Jerome will be coming, I re resuming? Okay. Yeah, good. Good. Um, Are you covering, is somebody covering East Montpelier now? And not to my knowledge, but I don't believe that's in the workers district. I believe Montpelier is, is another... Uh, no, East, East Montpelier. Montpelier. Oh, East Montpelier. I'm not they sure. never opted to have Orca. Neither did we. Right. Just for the record. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's just a matter of public um, coverage, I guess. And I think it's been helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, usually I get the state house before everything shut down, so I don't want to do all the select board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meetings. right. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, all right, so what do we, so what we need to do today is to officially put on the record that we're opening the town hall for use by public bodies, that's municipal groups, to use the town hall. We need to figure out scheduling for the use of the town hall before 
when we were meeting. I mean, we kind of knew select board was every Monday night. Don't schedule anything else. I understand there's a way to have a calendar to sync that, how does, who, so, who manages that and how does it work? Cliff? So for municipal purposes, everyone who wants to conduct a meeting here, whatever commission, board, committee, uh, they'll work through the town clerk's office, um, notify the town clerk's office and whether it's the town clerk or the town clerk wants to, you know, have someone else assigned to do that, mm -hmm. assistant town clerk or maybe Katie, maybe managing the calendar. It'll be on the town calendar on the website as what we used to do. Um, and of course you publish uh, a snapshot of the calendar and put it on the uh, court board there in the office as well. When the Friends uh, gets going and we expand the use of the hall to uh, non-municipal purposes, then the Friends will appoint an events coordinator who will start booking things onto the Town Hall events calendar. This will be separate from the Town's calendar. That events coordinator will also then notify the Town Clerk's office so that the Town Clerk can make sure that whatever event is pre-booked mm -hmm. or formally scheduled gets on the calendar so everybody has the visibility to see that. Ultimately, what we hope we can achieve, and it's just a matter of working out the details, um, because you can synchronize multiple calendars to each other. So once okay. the friends group has their calendar up and running, then they would coordinate with Katie or the town clerk or whoever is in charge of the calendar uh, to be able to synchronize. So when the town clerk enters something into the town calendar, it appears on the events calendar. Oh, okay. When the events coordinator puts something on the events calendar, mm -hmm. it appears on the town calendar. Oh, cool. Wow. Okay. In the initial phase, though, they will manually have to make a point, you know. Yeah. We're not going to make it mandatory that the town clerk monitor the events calendar. We're going to make it that the event coordinator has the responsibility of notifying the town clerk's office of any events that they're scheduling. Until we get this thing, sync thing done. Okay. Right. That sounds and great. that way, as far as anyone who's serving in the municipal function, they only have to look at the town calendar. Okay, good. All right, so because the t this space will be the dedicated town space with no overlap to the events calendar. That's right, and it yeah. always takes priority. So starting, I guess, effective immediately, um, folks are gonna have to notify the town office to put things on the calendar, mm -hmm. right? And do they contact you, Barbara? Or just contact the, you and Judy? Each committee and commission chair kind of picks and chooses who they want to notify. Some people go to Judy, some people come to me. I suspect some people go to Katie. But any one of us can do it. It, it okay. would be nice if it was this one central person, but it's been a mix match of whoever any committee commission chair chooses to contact. Is okay. it worth having something like a you know, town hall calendar Gmail or whatever, or just to, so any of those requests go to one location for you so there's no confusion? They, that they, they, up, that? up until now, they've gone to whoever the committee chair contacted, either me or Judy, mm -hmm. or and perhaps it, Katie and, did some, I don't know. And that works okay? You don't, that works okay? Yeah, because as long as it gets on the calendar, we all know it. Right. So, okay. regardless okay. of who puts so it So it's on. not broken, we don't need to fix it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. Okay. So ideally, well, I, I think maybe what we could do is an email could go out by Monday to all the committee commission chairs saying, would you please send us your upcoming six month calendar? Mm -hmm. And okay. if, you know, XYZ committee is going to continue meeting on the third Thursday of every month, we'll just go ahead and right now put that in for the next six months. So we and don't. They would only need to contact us if that schedule for them changes. So we don't. I would have assumed that, that the calendar is current in a Zoom environment, be, but it's, but it, am I hearing I don't that? think it's six months out. I think it's been as each committee commission chair has contacted us mm -hmm. just because it's been so slow and disorganized. Right. So right now, so it may I, don't or think, may. I don't think there's more than June. Okay, but there is, there. we have in some fashion still been using the calendar. It's not yes. meetings happening that no. aren't on the calendar. They, the, the commission boards committees 
um, agenda is on the calendar and you just click on it yeah, yeah, to yeah. get the Zoom info. Right. So now there won't be this, well, maybe there still will be Zoom info if we right. do hybrid. So um, that's that kind of becomes the bigger question in the, you know, the OWL solution is, you know, that's, let's say that's a month out. So we still have what literally like what does the next I think the next step looks like um, I didn't get a chance to finish what I was saying so in the meantime do we have a computer a town computer that could be used for whoever is having the meeting to do what you're doing now Cliff we have a guest computer, but is Judy still utilizing it to work? We, for we have a public laptop that's kept in the vault for research. And I think that's the only mobile, non-dedicated. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could use that in the interim? Yeah, I would think we could use that one in the interim also. It, hey, what happened to I the mean, laptop it, that you used to It's getting used frequently in the vault. Oh, so committee commission chairs would need to be responsible for coming to get it when the town office is open. Right, we need one we can have here, I think. So, a good question, Cliff. There is, Katie, um, the laptop that we just replaced, um, what happened to the old one? Barbara, I wonder if it's still in the office. The recommendation from RB Tech was to return it to their office, I, I think for recycling. Okay. But I, I don't know if it's still in the I have labeled it and left it at the town clerk's office for RB Tech's um, recommendation. I wonder if I could contact them and ask them if they have a machine such as that that we could use that has video capacity at this point. Well, let's hold off on that um, because I know that there was a secondary laptop that um, Sandra was using from time to time. And she's not using that anymore because we got her a dedicated laptop. So there are at least two devices floating around that we could look to press into service. And if need be, I'm sure RB Tech could come up. That, that could be our fallback option is RB Tech, I'm sure, could provide us with mm -hmm. something. It wouldn't and, have to be high, heavy horsepower. The owl, the owl, once we have it, doesn't need to connect to a device. It, it, it's connect, it is directly yeah, to the... Yeah, you want it to connect to the monitor up there. And that's all it needs. It doesn't and it need needs a... to be connected to the internet. Right. And then you synchronize it through the uh, smart device. Mm -hmm. So it syncs though to Zoom or... Right. What is the smart device? It's, it goes with it could be a, It could be um, uh, uh, iPhone. It could oh, be a, so it does need a device. Yeah, to get it going. So is the best way to do that using one of these laptops? Yeah. Once we get it going, we can do it with the laptop, but when I first set it up, I'll have to use either my iPhone or my iPad to initialize it and train it to recognize our network and mm -hmm. get onto the monitor and whatnot. Once I've got all that set up, it's pretty easy because then you mm -hmm. just plug it in the laptop, turn everything on, and it's off and running. So there's not a lot of process involved for anyone, uh, any of the committees that would want to be using it. So Cliff, uh, why, why would you need to use your iPad or smartphone? Is it, is it because, um, is, I didn't see that the OWL is an Apple thing. Uh, it could be any smart connected device. A smart, but so, so here's, so here's where my head is. Um, if we're over time going to be transitioning to a town laptop, mm -hmm. then, and that's not a smart device, mm -hmm. then, you know, when there's upgrades to the OWL software or mm -hmm. whatever, like, you know, how to, I just am wondering whether that's all going to be a barrier. No. The purpose of the smart device is so you can first get it up and running, mainly to connect it to a Wi-Fi network. And then you can disconnect and... It doesn't have any keyboard or anything on it. You can't type in a password and say, oh, recognize this network and then type in a password. You have to connect to it with a smart device, download their app, right? use the smart device to initialize it, and save these settings, and after that it's off and running. And then using the smart device to control it is optional. 
Okay. So then how are the different boards, committees, and commissions going to um, be able to use that? Somebody on each one of those will have to use their smart device? No. They will plug into the computer that we have here for meeting purposes. Okay. That computer will be connected to the Al device. And it's just off and running after that. You just turn it on. Okay. okay. Does that, so theoretically, like if they met at some other location, if they initiate, if they actually made that that smart link for you know for that local mm -hmm. Wi-Fi connection, would they be would that automatically sync between, or would you have to switch? I think it can hold a few different uh, hotspots in memory. So and it would automatically switch. You wouldn't have to have a right. A so smart if for some to... reason you needed to have it over at the town office. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I'm thinking. Like mm -hmm. your town office and school. Yeah, are you wait and see Brooks done? You know, school, you know, the, mm -hmm. there are certain places in town that I can say we want to have. Well, I think that would be up to the school to do that. But, you know, Sharon has opted to volunteer to have me train her. You could certainly use your smartphone yeah. to control it if right. you need her. Well, roles. but then Denise said, no, 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 not Sharon. We're going to pay you to do it. So, so. Um, initially, but then right, somebody else has got to pick it up. I think know. initially we get Cliff to help set everything up in order and. So, so, so here's where I was just going to go. These things we all know are glitchy, right? How many times have you set your iPhone up on your home iPhone, your home internet, and and it forgets, or mm -hmm. who knows what? Two happened. times. All, all yes, the, how many times? All, yeah, times. all the time, all the time. And so, the, so the bottom line is, you know, we can't we can't solve for every little. It's supposed to behave like this, and it isn't going. It doesn't. So, we're just going to have to, you know. Muddle through. We'll muddle, we'll muddle, yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. It's it sounds like a good it sounds like a good solution, but but yeah. So we were on kind of what does the next one month look, look like? like, right? Before we, may... we have that. And 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 my other question is, and I know Steffi has a question. I which boards, literally which boards is it? We can say that the town hall is open for meetings, um, and it has to be open for meetings because open mm -hmm. meeting law applies now. But which boards and commissions are within our authority to say this is how you're going to do it? I'm, I'm not. I'm not. It's it's in answer to your question. It's any of the boards, committees, and commissions where we make appointments. Okay, so it's so it's like the DRB, the Conservation Commission, um, even the ones where we appoint because the te because nobody volunteered to run. It's, it's, it's all the same boards and commissions and committees that existed before the COVID shutdown. I mean, it would apply to cemetery too, even though they're elected because they're a public, a municipal body. So it's any municipal body. I, I get right. that. My, my question though is the, is, you know, we're talking about what our solution long term is and we're going to have to talk about our one month solution, but are we necessarily positioned to say to everybody, this is exactly the solution you're going to use. We probably can't tell the cemetery commission, no, but they we, can. But we can't. Everybody at else. their peril choose not to and be out of step. I, mean, I, 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 I think that most of the boards and committees and commissions would welcome it, kind of being all the same, so that people learn the the process. I, and I'm not saying they wouldn't. I'm just I'm just wanting you know to be aware of where the clear lines of authority are. Well, and it goes back to just the same as it was before COVID, where the select board, for instance, says this is where you will post a, agendas, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Because you wanted to say something? <clears throat> yeah, I would propose that uh, if we decide and agree to invest in this device, I would propose that we use our select board meetings as our test grounds, mm -hmm. work out all the kinks. Mm -hmm. Once we've done that, then we can extend it to the other, well, at right. that point the select board can yeah. extend it to the other committees. Well, and before the, the commissions, COVID, and before the COVID shutdown, the option of having a meeting also be able to be attended remotely was always an option. We just never had that mm -hmm. because we didn't need to. Mm -hmm. But now it seems like that's something we're after. So it seems to me like within the next month until we get this set up, people would just go back to meeting the way they used to. 
And when we get this set up, then we can offer that as an option if they want to, if they right. would like to do that. So in the meantime, we meet here, and if people want to join us, come and join us. To right. be clear, the, the quorum has to be physically present. So three of us has to be, and if two of us were remote, in Chicago or California mm -hmm. or something, we could do that too. So um, there's a quorum is physically I present. don't think that's right. From no, what I read, not, it's not what I read. There has to be one person. There has yeah. to be a quorum yeah. present, but they don't have to be in the same room. Right. Oh, they really? can, they can be at least yeah. one person. They can be the via. They can be via Zoom. You just have to have somebody here to let the public attend the meeting. Oh, so we could still do. No kidding. We could still do everything remote as long as there's an opportunity for somebody to be here to set up the meeting so that. If member of the public could wow. attend. Wow, that's... And a member of the of public would, I mean, then, that, then that, that's where you lead into the question of, well, what if the member of the public wanted to participate on Zoom? But I like, Denise, I like the solution of, nope, we're not doing that. We're going to just, I mean, we're, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm guessing probably everybody is. And Well, now and, I don't think everybody is. Well, that's, you know, and, they, and some people have a reason for, for not, not being, being. Right. And, a, and a very legitimate reason. Well, um, well, like the food stores, I mean, and other proprietors, it's going to have to be an honor system, and let's hope mm -hmm. yeah. that people, you know, if we're all vaccinated, our risk is... Okay, Stephanie's still risk. waiting to ask a question. <laughs> Stephanie! Right. Um, until there's the ability to have something remote, right? Right, because the governor's office failed to give us time to have come up with a solution to going back to meeting in public. Okay, but then we'll be able to at some point be able to do the hybrid thing like yep. this, yep. which is actually working out great. The other question I have is when you had, when Cliff had the OWL program up, it said on it, something about the ability to connect two owls. And I'm just wondering what that means. Why would you need two? Unless you had a big room, maybe. If you had a larger venue that you wanted to set up um, and had more than, required greater than an 18 foot radius for people to be able to speak and be heard, then you would synchronize another owl in and have it at opposite ends of the large room that you're in. For instance, if we had town meeting at, in the gym, mm -hmm. at yeah, the, school, the school, you'd probably need at least two, probably, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah, if you've only got an 18-foot radius, basically. Is there a maximum number of people who can participate at the same time who can be on the OWL program? Good question. It, it's a function of how many people can sit around in a circle uh, <laughs> within yeah. an 18-foot radius <laughs> right. of the OWL. Okay. It sounds like it's like like think the old speaker phone that sat in the middle right, with the little right. arms yeah, coming I call, out. I call it the Star Trek phone. Yeah, um, no, the, those yeah spiders. Spider, so yeah. yeah, so it's like that. It's like if you can get your voice heard, if you can get your mug in the in the way, then you're in. <laughs> <laughs> Katie had a question. Go ahead, Katie. It's, it's kind of ironic that the low tech solution now is what y'all are doing today, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's worth. Mm -hmm. From my point of view, it is problematic trying to participate in the meeting and run the camera, pan it around to see everyone, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the audio quality that we're experiencing in this room mm -hmm. is less than ideal. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 You guys are hard to hear because you're coming through the little computer. And if there were more, else to operate the camera. but if there were more people here, 
then I'm imagining that it would be even it would be even harder to hear you guys. Yeah. Because there would be you know more paper shuffling and more speakers, chairs. Put speakers up to that. I I mean it, it seems to me we just <clears throat> go ahead with this owl. Yeah. Um, it's a thousand it. bucks. Yeah, yeah, if we can yeah. get reimbursed later, great. If not, um, I appreciate your thoughts, Katie, and and that's you know something to think about. But I think we should just go ahead. And yeah. get this owl, get get things set up, get things synced, and right. go from there. I, I agree with that. A thousand dollars is a lot, but it's not mind-numbingly, you know, expensive. expensive. And I kind of feel like we have, we could we could end up spending an ordinate amount, inordinate amounts of time fussing with the technology. Katie and Stephanie are our friends and they can hear us well, but the solution might be frustrating for other people mm -hmm. and, you know, and we can't hear you as well. That is, that is absolutely true. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that totally too. Okay. I mean, I think it serves not only the COVID need, the risk mm -hmm. for people that aren't populated, mm -hmm. but also just increases the accessibility for people mm -hmm. that have trouble getting here. Right. And I really like that and that. to make this as, I'm Easy. thinking especially in the winter. Right, yeah, in the yeah. winter we might have one person mm -hmm. come in and set up and you know run the meeting from here and the rest of us can be on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, we, so, that, so that we're not taking up everybody's Saturday too much. I wanted to see if Fletcher or Scott had anything you wanted to say. Um, I'm here for Cemetery Commission which is meeting next Wednesday. Yeah. I'm assuming we'll just come in and meet and we'll let you do the test run over the next month or right. whatever. So we'll just meet <clears throat> for our agenda and public notifications. We'll just say we're meeting here. Um, yeah, I'm, over the weekend I will send an email out to all of the committees, commissions, boards, whatever, chairs and vice chairs and let them know about using the space, give them the code to get into the key box. Um, and then it's, and also reminding everybody that it's their responsibility to make sure they clean up after themselves, which I'm sure everybody will. Um, and what the plan is going forward. And we're off and running. Scott, did you have anything? Well, uh, <clears throat> happy June, June 19th. I know it's an official it's holiday. Yeah. Right. It's official. Celebrate freedom and equal rights. Yeah. So we are, so our, we're, the town hall is officially open for, as of, as of now, today, yeah. for um, municipal meetings. Right, municipal uses, as I said in the, on the agenda. Yep, and we are, we're probably going to do a motion. Can we do a motion today to order the OWL? Or do yeah, we, we can. Have? Yeah, I would yeah. suggest, um, I'm not sure if the shipping is included in the $1,000 price tag. Um, I don't know if there's any other peripheral cabling or something mm -hmm. that I'm not thinking of right now that we might need to purchase. So I would uh, make a motion to authorize for uh, an amount not to exceed $1,500 for the purchase and setup of an Al Pro device. Okay. I will second. Second. Was that and you were making that I, I, I am happy to act and coordinate with Sandra to get this on order. Right, right through the town credit card. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So so the yeah, so that makes sense. And and the motion is that we are that we are delegating to Cliff the right. the to purchase over. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe yeah. it's better if somebody else makes that motion. Well, so, yeah. so 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 um, it is it's nine nine it's nine hundred ninety nine dollars at B and H photo free shipping. There you go. Yeah. And you'll have it by the twenty third. We so, ordered today. So uh, yeah, so I'll take ownership of the motion that we're going to authorize Cliff to work with Sandra to order the owl and whatever peripheral accessories equipment we need um, up to uh, fifteen hundred dollars without coming back to us. I'll second that. Yep. All right. Good. We'll get that additional. Speakers. Oh, now we, we can just all do. We don't have to do individual. Everybody is. Uh, so I'd like, like to, I mean, I'd like to amend that, that in the event that the owl isn't allowed enough, the speakers on that little thing to project that we authorize the office staff and Cliff to 
um, add additional speakers if it falls under the 1500, which it will. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Are you ready to take a vote? Everyone in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Hey, I forgot how to do it in person. <laughs> <laughs> so I so moved that we. I know. I so moved that we. Uh, I'd make a motion that we reopen the town hall downstairs of the town hall for official town business. Mis municipal functions. Municipal functions um, that would not include private. Or on a case by case, we would also allow private functions on a case by case review. No, by, we're not no. ready for that. No, we're not ready no, for no, that. No, okay, no. I came in late. No, okay, the, the town, yeah. okay just for municipal functions. Right, we need to do the agreement with the friends. We also need to approve what? our usage policy. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. And that we will review at our regular meeting on the 28th. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, <clears throat> it's. It's quite a bit uh, more evolved than the previous simple policy that we had. So I'll uh, get that out to everybody so you have a chance to read it prior to the meeting. Yeah, that'd be great. great. And, uh, Good. Sharon, you had got to see a sneak preview of it. I worked in your edits and tried to address some of the um, well, we know what those concerns. Were. I can resend Sharon's document as well because you also had some comments that weren't necessarily edits but I figure you can just bring that up in the meeting. Yeah, yeah. I sent it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll as just resend it so everybody doesn't that. have to go digging for it. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask? Do we have to build anything yet about the clean, you know, the cleaning? I think we just need to just just that later. Just the basic. look at the document. And yeah, see. Cliff probably thought of everything. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. Are we having a big meeting on the 21st with the friends? Is that on? No. 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 Okay. Um, are we doing a big meeting with the friends ever? Yes. On the 28th. Uh, That's so the at 28th. the last okay. regular, it's well, like no, no. At the last regular meeting, um, I shared with the board that the friends, uh, because we were working on that grant, we were still trying to finalize the uh, management, proposed management agreement and rental agreement. And that what we would do is get those documents finalized, ready to present to the board. And then at that point, we'd come to the board and say, okay, we're ready, let's pick a date. Okay. And on the 28th, what we'll be doing is looking at the usage policy. The town hall usage because policy, that which is different. Is, that is a document that the select board controls and right. deals with. The friends group uh, likely will attend that meeting. Uh, just so if there's just questions, peripheral questions mm -hmm. related to the pending management and rental agreement in conjunction with this usage policy, there's people there who will be able to answer yeah. those questions okay. who aren't named Cliff Evans. Great. Barbara, you had a comment? I, I do have a question, and it is related to what John started to say about other groups on a case-by-case -case basis. So prior to COVID, there were other palace-based groups that even though they're not official town committees or commissions, were kind of treated that way for the purpose of being able to meet at the town office. And I'm thinking of specifically the Robinson Sawmill folks, the, friends. the Callis <laughs> Historical Society, the Callis Democratic Committee. They all had open invitations to schedule their meetings at the Callis town okay. office. Okay. And so as soon as they hear this, they're going to be calling and asking if yeah. they can meet here. So I'd like to, I'd like to know how we can Inform them. So maybe we can say that groups other than municipal bodies that were using the town hall or town office prior to COVID would still be able to, would again be able to use the downstairs portion for meetings. That's up to you. If you guys, guys want to just limit it to municipal town I, boards and commissions, I mean, that's, that's fine. I just want to be able to know how to answer them when they start calling. Yeah, yeah. it's easier right now to do that than... It is, it is easier, and, and they don't have to... I mean, they're, we love them, and they are, you know, they are all friends, but they don't have to comply with open meeting law. Right. And that's our reason, and I feel like let's go in baby steps and get our usage policy in place. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, a really yeah. easy answer. Okay. Get the, yeah. the select board is taking baby steps. We don't even have a usage policy yet. We are opening it for town groups only to so that they can comply with open meeting law. Okay, thank yeah. you. I just wanted yeah. clarification that makes sense. on that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I agree. 
Um, All right. If there's and I have a few other just little minor questions, just so we make sure we think about it. So um, you already talked about housekeeping and cleanup, and so I would like to suggest that perhaps we put signage in the kitchen that tells people that these dishes are not necessarily clean because even though they were cleaned thoroughly when they were put in there. Mm -hmm. Little critters come to say there might be mud and mouse and, and, mouse and, and so we don't. I don't think we want to have to be responsible for <coughs> washing them every week. So no. I think as long as it's okay with you guys, we just put a little sign up there that if you choose to use one of these dishes, wash it before and yeah. after use. Are you that's willing okay. to make those? Uh, are you willing to do that? I'll do that as long as that's okay with you guys. Yep, that'd yeah. be great. And then there are knowing how um, meetings used to happen over at the town office. There are committees and commissions that would regularly bring snacks, which was fine, but whenever Judy and I would get to the town office the next morning, we would need to clean up after them. There was popcorn and cracker, uh, cracker crumbs and all kinds of things all over the floor. So we would clean up after them, we would vacuum and so forth, but there's not gonna be anybody here to do that. And well, I think we're gonna, make it, we're gonna make it clear in our reopening email that you have to clean up after yourself. There's nobody's mother here to help you. Okay, as long. But I think. But I who's going to police that? So when somebody. I, you know, I, I think it's going to be. Or just no, bring no food into the building. Well, I, I, I think that we can see how it goes. Okay. And if it becomes a real problem, then we'll have to make a change. But and you can let us. You can let us know. I think one thing that you guys could be really clear about, and this could be, you know, and I trust you. But I was thinking a sign and that would be cold, and I thought, no, Barbara will make the sign and it won't be cold. Um, that says, you know, <coughs> Barbara and Judy don't want your leftover snacks. Thank you anyway. Right. Um, are you going to be? Are you saying this in coordination with reopening the town office for use? Are you, is I'm just doing? talking about the town, town hall because okay. my understanding is that all meetings will be here, not at the town office. Right, um, right. as much but, as possible. But, but, the, but, but who will come after the morning after I meetings see your point. to check and make sure right. there's no... I don't think anybody. Right, so, so, we, so we are going to need a, you know, don't leave your snacks, your mother isn't here, the mice are, please clean up. <laughs> okay, as, yeah. but, but I, but, and, and as long as we un, they understand that if they do bring snacks and not just leave them, right? But just if any drop on the floor, right. sweep it up. So, so we forth. we can make sure that there's a broom and a dustpan handy. If there isn't one, can we please buy one and make it? Yeah, and we, we we have we have brooms and dustpans in the broom okay. closet right back there. <laughs> but I'm thinking maybe we put one out where it's more visible. Yeah, I I am happy to do that and say you know. This well, is for cleaning up your crumbs. Well, and honestly, a vacuum, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I live in an 1850 farmhouse, so, and so does John. And no, my who else? 42. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> we, we, know, we, bar, we all live in old houses. <laughs> so even the crumbs in the trash is, you know, so sometimes I go into Maple Corner Community Center and I'm astonished at what, it's all in the trash, but yeah. it's in the trash. It's still there. It's, it's still, still there. Yeah. So I think we do. I think we have to no say rats. that they have to do a carry and carry out. Take, trash carry, with you. take your trash yeah. with you. Don't leave it here because there's nobody to monitor the trash. What's, yeah. One thing we can look at too. I mean, I know what we do is do with the state as well. Sometimes we have circumstances like yeah, this. Yeah, you deal with that. I mean, yeah, I handle janitorial contracts in our work, and so we, you know, if we have. Usually, like we're going to have probably have somebody cleaning this, let's say once a week or every other a lot of meetings, whatever it is, you know, what depending on yeah. the frequency. If and usually in that, you've got a clause in those contracts for call ins, and it may be we say, you know, if if we find that the space is left in a mess and it requires a call in, they are responsible for picking up that cost. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that goes into a well, I'm I just saying, know. I you know, I. I it, it's well, a disincentive know, to uh, leave messages on television. Well, you. I think that's something we can talk about when we're reviewing the usage policy because we may want to put something like, right, yeah, in there. Pause in there. Mm -hmm. But I think for right now, to get started, um, some of this is going to be trial and error, just like the technology, um, just like scheduling stuff on the calendar. I think it's going to be a little bit of trial and error and see kind of how it goes. So um, there's a motion on the table that's being amended? For what? Amended to how? allow for uh, additional uses beyond municipal uses 
Is that uh, were historic uses of the clerk's office? No, no, no. Like it was a question. It was a question. It was a question. Okay, I thought there was so, an agreement that we were going to do that. No. I thought it was really clear. Yeah. <laughs> so the motion, Katie, yeah. can you read back the motion? Yes, John Greenman moved to open the town hall downstairs for municipal functions. And then I have a description of the conversation that ensued. Okay, but the motion itself is just to open the usage of the ground floor of the town hall for municipal purposes. All right, and I guess, was there a second? If not, I'll second it. Sure, I'll second it. I did, all right. I you didn't did. remember. I don't either. Okay. All right, are you ready to take a vote? All in favor, please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And I think with that, we could be done. Unless this is what this meeting was just about, nothing else. Move to adjourn. Second. second. Yep. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Good. everyone, for your Saturday morning. Wasn't this fun?